Samantha knew she wasn't supposed to be poking around in the abandoned houses, but her curiosity always took control when something seemed odd or out of place. This area of town had been blocked off and quarantined by some government-like agency almost 10 years ago. They had been told there was an ongoing gas leak or toxic waste issue. People had believed the story, but as the years passed, they became more suspicious of what was really going on. Welcome back. Your host as always, Professor Lucius. Today, I bring you SCP-2386, Pink Ladies. The house was derelict and seemed like it had long ago been pillaged for anything of worth. There was hardly anything left and by the looks of the whiskey bottles on the floor, some homeless people had been living here. What did appear a bit odd was that one of the bottles was practically full still. With all the empty bottles strewn about the house, it didn't seem likely that whoever had been drinking them would leave a perfectly good bottle behind. Besides that, there was a backpack nearby the couch. Wait, the couch? Hardly any furniture, no TV and empty shelves, but a perfectly good couch? It had some unique floral and stitched pattern on it which wasn't typical. If anything, it appeared custom made. What was that? In the corner of her eye, she thought she saw something move. Hello? Is someone there? No reply. She hesitantly moved towards the staircase where she had seen the movement. As she peered around the corner, she saw a shadow on the staircase. It was tiny, like a doll. As she moved around the corner, she saw the cutest little doll sitting on the stairs. Aww. As she reached to pick it up, it stepped back. Startled, she pulled her hand back. Hello? The doll tilted its head and stepped forward. It smiled at her and pulled out a piece of candy from behind its back and gave it to Samantha. What was this magic? As she reached for the candy, coming down the stairs was another three of these lovely dolls. They bounced their way down to the other doll, smiling and waving. The next few hours flew by without Samantha realizing. She played with the dolls all afternoon. It was like a dream come true. What little girl didn't wish that their dolls could play with them? From outside, she heard a crash and a yell. Outside the window, she saw the shadows of three men walking past the house. Two of them appeared to be wearing some sort of helmets. As she turned back, she took a deep breath. Floating, mere inches from her face, was one of the dolls. It had wings! Not only that, but its hands had been replaced by sharp claws resembling scissors. Its eyes glowed and pulsed with anger, but it wasn't looking at her. It was looking past her at the window and the men outside. The man in front motioned to continue on, and the three of them left. As soon as they were out of earshot, the doll retracted its claws and its face returned to normal. It slowly floated back down to the floor, to be joined by its friends, who had hid behind the couch. At this point, it was starting to get dark, and Samantha thought she best head home. Truth be told, the scissors and wings had creeped her out a little, and she felt it prudent to end her day's journey now. After all, she wasn't even supposed to be here, and those men outside seemed like they could be dangerous. As the months wore on, she continued making visits to her new little friends. They were constantly giving her gifts, the last one being a beautiful blue gem. They had never harmed her, and only occasionally had she seen their scissor hands again. Only when those same men passed the house. She had managed to get a closer look at them. They seemed like some sort of police force, escorting a doctor or a scientist. She assumed they had been responsible for the quarantine in the area, and perhaps that's why the dolls didn't like them. What's that? Where'd you get it? Arthur had asked her. Samantha twisted her mouth into a frown. She had been dying to tell someone about her little friends. However, she wasn't sure if it was safe for them, or even him. It had been her little secret, but Arthur had always been trustworthy. You promise to keep this a secret? Arthur nodded anxiously. Okay. These dolls gave it to me, in the quarantine zone. Arthur frowned and looked uneasy. Who gave you the what and the where? Shut up, I'm serious. Arthur broke out in <laughs> laughter. Fine, don't believe me. You won't be getting any gems. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Come on, show me. Samantha hesitated, once again unsure if it was a good idea. Come on, you know you can trust me. Samantha nodded hesitantly. Okay, we'll go next week when school's out. Hello? Nothing was there. 
No sound, no movement. Samantha called out again. I brought a friend. He's safe. He won't hurt you. Behind her, Arthur was smirking. However, a moment later, his mouth was agape in awe. From behind the couch, a doll walked out. He couldn't believe it. She hadn't been lying. It flew up into the air and then towards them. As it floated inches from his nose, it pulled out a purple gem and offered it to Arthur. They played throughout the day, the warm summer air making them giddy and sleepy. Ow! Arthur sat up with a start. As he looked down at his stomach, he saw one of the dolls coming out from under his shirt. What are you doing down there? The doll simply smiled and offered him a candy. <laughs> okay, thanks. The next day, Arthur noticed a strange growth around his stomach, near where the doll had been. It was odd, like a cloth patchwork was forming, but it didn't hurt and didn't seem to be infected. As the summer continued on, Samantha and Arthur came back numerous times to play with their little friends. He had shown them the patch, but the dolls had smiled and pulled his shirt back down and offered him more treats and gifts. They didn't seem worried, and somehow this put Arthur's mind at ease. As school resumed, the two hadn't had much time to visit their little friends in a while. Actually, it had been weeks. We should go see them, at least to check if they're okay. Really? I've got so much homework right now. Come on, just a few hours. Didn't you say you wanted to ask them about the patch in your stomach anyway? That's true. It seems like it's bigger. Okay, tomorrow then. Their little friend seemed happy to see them, especially Arthur. They seemed like they were nurturing him, taking care of him, almost like caregivers. Samantha felt a little jealous. She had found them first after all, but it was fine. They were still sweet and adorable. The door flew open. It was that scientist and his troops. Lambda Seven, Swarm Queens, secure the children, don't harm them. You, go to the dolls, calm them down, don't hurt them if you can avoid it. The troops came in and grabbed the children, hoisting them away. The other man in the orange jumpsuit slowly approached the dolls with his hands outstretched. The last thing Samantha saw was a doll's scissor hands as they swarmed him. Hello children, my name is Dr. Kloss. Are you both feeling okay? Did those things harm you? Arthur and Samantha looked at each other and shook their heads. Okay, you've been going there for a while, haven't you? Yes sir. Don't worry, I'm not upset at you. Can you explain why they didn't harm you? They tore my man to bits but seemed to not have harmed either of you at all. No, sir. They never tried to harm us. Kloss frowned. Okay. Well, I better get you two home, eh? Amnestics and send them home. They aren't injured. Arthur woke up the next morning. How'd he get home? What had happened yesterday? In fact, it felt like pieces of his memory were missing from months ago. It all seemed like a blur. His head was a little woozy. Weird. Perhaps Samantha would know. I've got no idea. I remember meeting you after school and going to the quarantine zone. And the rest? The rest is hazy. Same. Weird. Maybe that toxic gas story was real. Yeah, maybe. Arthur spent the rest of the day on his bed, daydreaming and playing games. He noticed his side itching, but kept on playing. The itching got worse. It was probably nothing. He'd take a look in a minute. Suddenly, he felt a sharp, searing pain in his side. He yelled out and looked down at his side. His shirt started to turn red with blood. Something was moving underneath it. He slowly peeled back his shirt. SCP-2386 are a species of humanoid entities resembling dolls. DNA testing has shown similarities to the human botfly and silkworm. They have a set of wings similar to a butterfly or moth and all contain identical patterns on their torsos. They live in hives built to resemble furniture, usually close to suburban environments. They are kind and playful with females of any species, but are openly hostile to males. 
producing a set of scissor-like claws and swarming with intent to kill. The exception being during spring and summer when they enter their mating season. During this period, they will treat males the same as females. Once accustomed to them, they will open an incision in the male and place 30 to 65 eggs within them. The incision will heal over to resemble cloth. Eventually, the incision will split open and release fully formed SCP-2386 instances. A hive dating back to the 13th century was found, resembling a wicker basket. A few remaining SCP-2386 bodies were found. They resembled textured wheat and corn dollies. Appearances aren't always what they seem. What might appear friendly and cute to you could be a facade for malicious intent. Keep your wits about you at all times. As always, have a care and remember to subscribe, like, and share if you would. Until next time, farewell.